so now we're ready to go and take a sample so first sample today is going to be from the beach uh, the couple of things to consider before you enter the water is the tides so we're trying to take the sample on the tides on the way in at high tide or just on the ebb as it's falling back down again that is to make sure that the water is fresh that we're sampling go no deeper than knee deep um, this is just to from a health and safety point of view just to protect yourselves um, and then what we're going to do is reach out with the pole to the full extension of the pole up to two meters we're going to rinse the can three times the sample that we're going to take and then we're going to fill it the fourth time and then bring it into the shore to fill the sample bowl So the sample has been taken now and I've come back to the beach to fill the bottle. It's definitely important to come back to the beach to fill the bottle. It removes any risk of any rogue wave or any other splashes of water getting into the bottle. So with your microbiology bottle, it's really important that there's certain areas that you don't touch when you open the bottle. So when you take the lid off, try to hold at the top of the lid and do not touch any of this part uh, area of the bottle or inside of the lid and that minimizes any contamination risk. When you come to fill the sample up with the bottle, you just pour it in. And you want to leave approximately an inch of airspace at the top of the bottle. This just allows for any oxygen exchange and helps the bugs to survive should they be in the water present. And then when you screw the lid on, Again, just touch the top of the lid and the size of the bottle, and that's your bottle taken complete. And then finally for storage, the food bags. Get yourself a food bag. Drop the sample inside the food bag, and then just seal the top. That there now is a biosecure sample and can be stored with other samples. Any contamination that may be caused from the sample point that you've taken is contained within the bag. And then it's just stored inside of your cool box and you can pour the rest of the sample away. At present I haven't put any labelling on the bottle because for the Surface Against Sewage project the bottle is going to be labelled beach. But when you get back to your car or the vehicle or your home then you need to write down the time and the dates that you took the sample. Hey everyone, it's really important that when you get back to your car is to clean down your waders and kit but also to move the bottle out of the cool bag and into your cool box. So take the sample and into the cool box. So the cool box can either be one that you plug in that runs off your car battery or one that just contains ice blocks. You're looking to store it between 3 and 8 degrees Celsius. So the reason that we're cleaning the waders is just to reduce any risk of any cross-contamination from invasive non-native species because you're going from different waterways. The last thing we want to do as responsible samplers is to spread any invasive non-native species. So the solution you'll be using is Vercon 1%. So this can be done at home or at the beach side. Pour half of the solution in and then just use the brush just to brush down and make sure you're covering all surfaces that was in contact with the water. And then leave to air dry. Hi everyone, so we're at our second sample location now which is the estuary location or river location. So first off what we need to do is to clean the can and the sampling pole before we take the second sample. For this you'll use your Clenel wipes. Just open it up, take out one wipe. And what you want to clean is the first 18 to 24 inches of the pole and the whole of the can. The most important thing is to make sure you're wearing gloves as well because 
these wipes can, with people with sensitive skin, can cause irritation. These wipes are foaming, so you should be able to see all of the surfaces that you're covering. Now ready for you to take a second sample. Hi everyone, so we're at St Anne's at the river location and we're going to take a sample. Luckily here we're able to walk out onto the pontoon and get out to where the water is sufficiently deep to take a sample. In other locations you'll begin sampling from a bridge using a drop rope. Again I'm going to cover that a little bit later in the video. But for this sample now I'm just going to walk out a little bit further onto the edge of this platform, not enter the water and take a sample. One rinse. Two rinse. Three rinse. And fourth one is your sample. Hi everyone. Uh, we're at our third and final location, which is further up river and from a road bridge. This would be a location, I think, for about 80% of the sample points of the mouth of the river. Um, so for this, we're using a five meter long drop rope, which is made of steel core wire and a polyurethane coating, so we're able to clean it. So I've cleaned it down as per the last bit of filming and cleaned the can down. And now I'm just gonna walk out onto the bridge and take the sample. The best place to take the sample from is as close to the middle of the river where possible and safely you can do it. Um, so, and also what you need to make sure is that you secure this end of the rope because sometimes the flow can be quite strong and we don't want this pulling out. So what I tend to do is to drop this down, unfurl it and then just stand on the end of the rope before I dangle the can down. Okay, so now I'll go and take the sample. So just use my right arm to guide it down and keep it away from the wall. When I see it's touched the river, just plunge it down, agitate it three times, and then using my right arm to keep it away from the wall, I just pull it up with my left hand. So that's the sample taken. You can lay this on the floor without any issues. Get the bottle out with your bag. Fill the bottle up, as per instructed earlier. An inch to half an inch air gap at the top of the bottle. At the lid. Screw the lid on. Into your bag. And seal up. Back into the cool bag, take back to the car. Hello everyone, so now today I'm going to teach you how to clean your can after you finish the sampling for the day. So I've come straight in from the sampling, I've got my dirty sampling can, I've got a bucket, a ziplock bag to store the clean can in, uh, Vercon tablets, so these will be supplied to you in your kits. It's one tablet per 500ml of water, so I've made up 5 litre bottle of water. As you can see, there's a pink coloration to the Vercon when you make it up. Once this pink coloration is faded, then you need to throw the Vercon away and make up a new batch. So first thing, take your sampling can, place it into the bucket, then take your Vercon. What's key here is to make sure that you're wearing gloves, rubber gloves and eye protection as well because Vercon when in contact with some people's skin can cause irritation and certainly can cause irritation in the eyes. Slowly pour it in around the can. Making sure it's 
sure that the can is submerged. All surfaces of the can are covered. Five litres is enough. And then you simply move it around. Let's make sure all surfaces have been soaked and touched by the Vercon. And then leave that to rest for six hours. Hello everyone, welcome back. So, after six hours of soaking, all you need to do is to lift the can out of the bucket, shake off the excess vercon, set the bucket to one side, and over your sink, some freshly boiled water that has had a chance to cool. Just simply rinse all surfaces of the can. Take off the excess water and then set that can to one side to air dry. Once air dry, take your Ziploc bag, place the can inside the Ziploc bag, keep it sealed until you're ready for your next sampling day.